Hello, you're welcome back to Neat Drinks Millionaire's Club. So today I'm going to be teaching you how to dry your blocked headpieces in 30 minutes or less. So just sit back and listen to the complete well lecture. well-known means of drying your blocked headpieces is usually directly under sunlight and that could take between 4 hours to 10 hours depending on the size and the shape of your headpiece. But it has become important that we find alternative ways to dry our blocked headpiece because of three major reasons. Now, the first reason could be that you have delayed productivity, you may have some circumstances that have affected your productivity, and you need a quick fix so that you can shorten the time for you to deliver your job. That could be a reason. Another reason could be perhaps you do not have enough sunlight or the season or the weather in which you find yourself has affected the amount of sunlight in which you can carry out your drying process. So it has affected your productivity. Now, the third reason could be as a result of an emergency. You know, if your customer comes to you and asks, you for an emergency job that you need to deliver within 48 hours and you do not want to turn down the job so these kind of emergencies might make you want to find alternative ways to dry your head pieces in a shorter amount of time so but before we go to these alternative ways let's first look at sun drying it because that's the general way we dry our head pieces so sun drying it is putting it directly under sunlight between 4 to 10 hours to make sure your blocked head pieces are completely dry but this process has some pros and cons so let's first of all talk about the advantages so the pros of drying them under the sun is that you can dry it evenly and you do not always have to monitor the drying process you just leave it under the sun and the sun will do its job but the disadvantage of using sunlight to dry your blocked headpiece is that if you keep your headpieces under direct sunlight the uv rays of the sun are quite harsh for especially light colored headpieces so what it does is that it fades out the colors you know so even if it dries it eventually changes the color to a lighter shade which might look a little bit faded and not as appealing as what you originally planned it to be so that's the major disadvantage but to mitigate this you can put it right under a shade that if you're if you're putting it beside say a fence or a wall you just make sure that you keep it where the sun has casted a shadow on the floor so you keep it under the shade there the sun is going to be heating it but not affecting it directly with the uv rays so the color will still be maintained so the only kind of headpiece that you can dry under the sun that won't be so much affected is if your headpieces are dark in color like say navy or black or brown or coffee you know these colors are quite dark colors so even if you place them on under direct sunlight you won't have any problem with them losing their color now we are moving on to alternative ways of drying our blocked headpieces in less than one hour or 30 minutes so the first way we can do this is by using a hand dryer yes you can use a hand dryer all you need to do is to put your fascinator on a table and then you hold on to your hand dryer and direct the heat to, to the fascinator you have to monitor it it's not like when you place it under the sun you have to look at it monitor it for at least 30 to 40 minutes until it dries completely so aside monitoring it you might need to channel the heat on all sections of the head block as it is drying gradually so the disadvantage is that it's going to take that amount of your time but it's still a better alternative than not having it at all. Now, the second way to dry your blocked head pieces is by placing it beside a heat generating object or machine. So an example of heat generating machine are gasoline generators. So gasoline generators generate electricity, but at the same time, they produce a large amount of heat, especially coming from the area of the exhaust fume. So if you're going to use a generator to dry your blocked headpiece, you just have to place it around the area where the heat is quite intense. But just make sure that you don't place it in front of the exhaust pipe, because if you do that, you might have some very toxic fumes coming out from that pipe. You might end up having some soot stains, or even if you don't have stains on them, it might come off having a foul um, toxic smell. So try as much as possible to avoid placing it directly in front of the exhaust fume. Just anywhere around the generator that produces as much heat. Keep it there and within 40 minutes to one hour, I'm sure you can get your fascinator to be dried and ready for you to complete your design. Now the third alternative to drying your fascinator, this one is actually quite simple, is to use a standing fan. So this can usually be done if you first try to dry your fascinator under the sun and it didn't dry completely. So maybe at night you can just keep the fascinator on a table, keep it beside a standing fan and direct the air from the fan just at the position of 
a fascinator so you can do this overnight by the time you wake up in the morning i can assure you that your fascinator will be completely dried and you can eventually do all that you need to do with it okay so now another way to dry your fascinator in less than 30 minutes and this one is actually my favorite because this was going to guarantee you 30 minutes or less is to dry your fascinator inside an oven so you can use a traditional oven or you can even use an air fryer but there is a method to doing this so for you to dry your fascinator using an oven you have to block it in a different way so that this method will be very successful the first thing you need to do instead of using a polythene bag to cover up the base of your fascinator before blocking you have to use an aluminium foil the reason why you have to do this is because if you put your fascinator inside the oven because of the heat of the oven the oven can melt the polythene bag or the cling film and it could ruin your fascinator finally so you need to make sure you use an aluminium foil to cover your fascinator base before you block it then another thing you need to do is the pins you're going to use for blocking you're not going to use those pins that have some plastic head attached to it you need to make use of pins that do not have any plastic elements just pure metal pins like aluminium pins or pins that are sturdy enough for you to block your fascinator this so this kind of pin you can see that this pin has a plastic head to it even though it has a metal body you shouldn't use this kind of pin the kind of pin you should be using is a pin that is doesn't have anything metal on it and is strong enough to be able to hold on to your blocked material okay so looking at this pin this is actually a wig makers pin it's used to make wigs generally but i also make use of them to block my fascinators so the idea is that whatever you're using to block your fascinator before it gets into the oven make sure that you're using pins that do not have any plastic attachment to it so that you won't have any trouble drying it in an oven so once you can wrap your blocks with aluminium and you block with um, non plastic coated pins you are definitely good to go to put your fascinator inside an oven so if you're going to put it in a traditional oven that is a gas oven please make sure that you do not put it on the bottom part of the oven that is the hottest so you have to put it like maybe the next layer or the center layer of the entire oven that way the heat will circulate right around and you're sure that there won't be any any situation where there is overheating that can result to burning of your uh, fascinator material so you can do that or if you're doing it in an air fryer an air fryer the heat comes from above and it circulates properly so you can only do that for small fascinator because the bulky ones might not be able to enter your air fryer you can see that i've given you four different alternative ways to drying your fascinator in 30 minutes or less have you tried any of these methods how did it go for you and which one do you think you'll be willing to try out these are actually my go-to methods and depending on the situation i decide the one that i go for and i always get excellent results so until i come your way again in my next video i'd like you to give this video a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to this channel tell me what exactly you are waiting for this is the place to be so if you have any questions concerning this method i've explained to you you can just simply drop it in the comments and i'll be sure to give you a feedback thank you so much for watching i look forward to seeing you in our next video god bless and happy crafting